What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Celtics Talk podcast. They just don't stop coming here on the NBC Sports Boston Podcast Network. Today, shifting gears a little bit. I know we've been doing the off-season drama, the Marcus Smart trade. I'm still a little bit reeling. And what's to come, especially as we prepare to launch into free agency. But wanted to downshift a little bit today, circle back to the draft. Celtics landing, Arkansas forward Jordan Walsh on draft night. So what are they getting? I think we've all heard the defensive reputation, what he can be, that wingspan. We had to find out a little bit further about the player that's coming to Boston. So we got in touch. Arkansas men's basketball coach, Eric Musselman, lead us through what the Celtics can expect from the Jordan Walsh experience, how he might be able to impact immediately at the NBA level and where he needs to grow as every 19 year old will invariably have to do at the NBA level. So let's get right into it. Here's our chat with the coach. All right, coach, let's just start big picture. What are the Celtics getting in Jordan Walsh? Well, Jordan is a, uh, a an excellent athlete, a player that can play multiple positions at the collegiate level. Uh, he was able to play the three, four, and the two. Um, he's an underrated passer, uh, very good rebounder for his position. Um, I think he's a guy that will carve a nice niche out uh, at that NBA level. We've heard a lot about his defense. What can you tell us about what you saw and that evolution there at Arkansas as well? Well, defensively, uh, what Jordan Walsh does is he, he can guard a guy individually and take a premier score out of a game. That's what he did at the college level where we could assign him uh, to a top player on the other team uh, and then not have to give any help. Uh, So he's a great lockdown defender individually. And then off the ball, he's a great loose ball getter. Uh, He rebounds out of his area defensively. Um, So he just gives you a lot of different things from a defense perspective. And most importantly, uh, he allows the coaching staff to have versatility in their defensive game plans uh, because of his ability to jump passing lanes and create some offense through defense. How rare is that to find someone that embraces that side of the basketball, especially as you know, at that, at that age, it feels like something, some guys evolve into, but you know, and and what, why does he have the potential to be so special? I mean, we know the wingspan and stuff like that. What is it about, about Jordan that uh, should allow him to thrive at the NBA level? Well, I think one instincts, you know, when you, when you're gifted with great defensive instincts um, and then you have toughness, um, and you have will and enjoyment in playing that side of the of the floor, uh, it certainly helps. He takes great pride uh, in his defense, both individually and then the team defensive concepts. Um, but you mentioned the wingspan for sure. I think that helps. The athleticism helps. But he also has an understanding in a defensive basketball IQ as well on when to gamble and when not to gamble. You know, at times, the one area he's got to improve on defensively is is staying out of foul trouble, but Mm -hmm. you'd much rather have a player be over aggressive than under aggressive. (laughs) So so the Celtics, you're probably aware the big trade up here, they move out Marcus smart. It's unfair to say that a rookie, a 19 year old can come in and replace anything that Marcus did based on what he had in the air, but how much can the Celtics potentially replace some of that defensive tenacity with a player like Jordan? Well, I think, you know, Jordan's, you know, he's a guy that, that enjoys, um, you know, defending people. So from a role standpoint um, and accepting uh, that that's a big part of how he can contribute, uh, I know that that he just wants to get on the floor any way possible. So certainly if there's, you know, the the, the assignment uh, to, to go in and try to guard a premier score, I think that he has the mentality to do that. He's done that, you know, as a freshman, um, you know, in, in a very, very talented SEC league that might, you know, be the most talented league from a pro perspective. And, and, and so he's guarded pros in the past as a freshman. Take me, give me a little glimpse of his personality. What did you learn about him in his season there? And, and what can Celtics fans expect from, from Jordan, the, you know, beyond the, the, the defensive reputation? Yeah, I mean, he wants to give back to the community. He got out in our community a lot, and did things. Um, he's really comfortable uh, speaking at youth camps. And, and, and um, I think really what the, the biggest thing with Jordan is he's, he's got a great heart. Um, he's very, very likable. Um, you know, he, he's a little bit quiet at times, can be a little bit uh, reserved at times. Um, but he's got, a, he's got a, a powerful 
energetic personality at times as well. So I think, you know, you got the the piece with the team and how you fit in the locker room and, and the guys are going to like him on the team. And then obviously there's the, uh, you know, how does a player fit in the community? And I think the people are going to really enjoy being around Jordan Walsh. I know you guys had a, you had a lot of players in the draft that obviously were drawing attention. Did did the Celtics reach out to you at all about Jordan? Do you remember them being out there? Like, was that something, anything that would have been on your radar leading up to the draft? Yeah, there's no question. I know that uh, Brad Stevens was at at least a few of our games um, without a doubt. Um, That's for sure. Um, You know, I got a chance to talk to Austin Ainge at the Chicago pre-draft combine in the hotel lobby. Um, So we did get a chance to speak there and, And there were, you know, several phone conversations. The Celtics had one of their scouts at our pro day. um, And then we had a a pro day post party. um, And and the Celtics were represented at that post party as well, where we got a chance to maybe individually sit down and talk and go into a little bit more detail about our players. And then um, post draft, I spoke to both Austin um, and Brad Stevens um, you know, just about player development ideas and such uh, regarding to Jordan. But certainly, uh, you know, the Celtics do a great job, maybe as good as any organization as far as communicating um, with at least with Arkansas. I can speak that um, <laughs> that they do a great job communicating and, and uh, you know, they were at they were at a lot of our games. I can say that. So you mentioned some of the, the you know avoiding fouling. Like, what else does Jordan have to work on? Obviously, offensively, there the, he, even he's come out and admitted that he's got to tighten up that three point shot and and evolve into a three and D guy. Where else can he sort of put his focus as he as he embarks on the NBA level? Yeah, I think defensively, it's it's going to be you know staying out of foul trouble, being disciplined defender at times, especially late game situation or late shot clock situations. And I think offensively, it'll be continue to improve as a three point shooter. Um, he's already shown great improvement from the from the last 12 months. And I guess the last couple months, he's shown a, a great improvement as well from three point range. The big thing is just being able to catch and shoot, make open threes at a good high percentage clip. Um, and then, you know, just like any young player, continue to work on ball handling and one on one moves as well. Um, and Jordan's a worker. So I, don't, I think all those areas he's going to be able to improve in those areas without a question. Nice. And last, last thing, just take me through his season. What, at what point did you, or did maybe it, 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 did it become clear that he could have the potential to go immediately to the NBA level? You know, what, was there an ebb and flow to the season? Like every, every first year player sort of goes through it at times. And, and, and especially on that tournament run, how much help was he during that process? Yeah. I, you know, I think that when we recruited him uh, and watched him as a high school player, we certainly felt like he had NBA potential um, with the length, the athleticism, uh, the instincts on both sides of the floor. Um, and then I, you know, as, as is all freshmen and especially with the, with the program like ours, where we had six freshmen, three of them, uh, get drafted. Um, each of them kind of had their own timeline, their own pace to how things went. Uh, Jordan had, you know, continued to get better as the season went along and, I thought he played his best basketball in the NCAA tournament. He had an incredible game against Kansas. Mm -hmm. You know, the great thing about, you know, Jordan is he's played in front of 20,000 people, home games at at Bud Walton Arena here, and, and, and we're a pretty big draw on the road. So he's played in big time road environments. And then you add in the NCAA environment that he had to play in and not just play in, but produce in. Um, So the stage is not, not too big he played on a big stage in high school and so I think all those things are really going to help him with his adjustment to the NBA level all right let's end on this I think I saw you described him as a violent defender which I thought was maybe the coolest description of a rookie I've I've heard in some time what what made you use that adjective to uh to describe the way that uh that Jordan might play out there yeah I mean I use that you know that term last year quite often is about you know, violently jumping in passing lanes, violently going after, uh, you know, rebounding, rebounding the ball outside of his area. You know, he can crash into bodies. Uh, he's not afraid of contact. Um, and so, you know, hence the phrase uh, violent defender. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I always feel bad for when, when these young prospects get taken from college programs so quickly, but uh, I can tell you Celtics fans up here are excited to see what Jordan's got. Coach, thank you so much for your time.
Yeah, thank you. And we're excited for him too. We, you know, you always want your player to start start their pro career as quickly and early as possible. Um, so we're we're excited too and can't wait to watch the Celtics and Jordan. Hey you, have you downloaded the new NBC Sports Boston app yet? It has the latest news, analysis, commentary, and insights from the experts, including Tom Carr and Phil Perry, John Tomasi, and yours truly, Chris Forsberg. You can also listen to podcasts, follow live scores and stats, catch highlights, and watch behind-the-scenes content and interviews. You can download the NBC Sports Boston app now in the App Store or on Google Play. Find the link in the show notes. Violent Defender. I mean... If you had to sort of start getting over the Marcus Smart loss, then hearing there's a kid coming that is a violent defender who likes diving on the floor for loose balls and violently jumping passing lanes, I guess that that takes some of the sting off of it. The Celtics are definitely going to have to sort of refocus on the defensive end if uh, they don't have Marcus Smart out there. And I'm not expecting Jordan Walsh to come right in and uh, be an impact defender from day one, but it is neat that the Celtics have someone in the pipeline now who potentially can grow and develop in that role, especially when you consider uh, they might be able to get my dog barking and supplement the Jays moving forward. I need everybody to go like and subscribe. Check us out on the YouTube page. But before we get out of here, before you click off, wanted to leave you with one more bit of Jordan Walsh. He met with the media on Monday, his sort of rookie introduction after a community event. Here's more from Jordan Walsh on getting started at the pro level. What's it like to be here, the draft pick of the Boston Celtics? I mean, it, it's amazing, you know, to be like their only pick in the draft. You know, for them to trust that and trust that with me, you know, that that means a lot, and it says a lot because I'm going to an organization that loves winning, and I love winning, so it means the, it means the world to me. It's safe to say this is a Boston welcome. How have you enjoyed the city so far? I've loved it. I loved it. I can feel I can feel the winning atmosphere like all around the city. Like the love for the Celtics is crazy. I don't know. This is going to be a weird question. I don't know if you play 2K. I do. Does this feel like a my career to you right now? <laughs> It definitely does. I feel like I'm hitting a step, a step in that for sure, for sure. What the your coach said you're a violent defender when describing you. What does he mean by that? Um, you know, I'm one of those guys who who's going to defend. You know, the one through four relentlessly. Uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that stop. That's going to give us an advantage over the other team, and that's that's what my game is around. That's the foundation for my game, and that's that's why he said that because I take so so much pride in that part of the game. I'm sure you've heard all the words, all the critiques behind your game. What goes into this summer? What goes into this offseason to prepare for the league? Um, I mean, it's, it's just a lot of work. You know, now that I have the opportunity to work with guys like Tatum and Brown and Al, like to be able to have that, you know, those people who have that, that experience who can teach me and, and, and give me, you know, hints of, of wisdom so I can better my game, you know, that, that, that means the world. And I have a whole summer to work with them to prepare for the season. So that's the most important thing. I'm taking all the advice I can to, to be able to hopefully be able to achieve what they've achieved. Can you talk to Brad about what your, your plan is so far for the summer, for the season? Um, it's just a lot, a lot of working out, a lot of works. Um, obviously, we have summer league coming up, so I'll be playing in summer league. Um, but it's just, it's just consistent work at things that I need to get better in my game. What were those two workouts, workouts like with, with Boston? Uh, Brad was saying that you shot well in those. Like, what was it like in those? I mean, it was, it was amazing. Um, it was great. I got to, you know, have, be in the atmosphere of, of a Boston workout and feel what it feels like to be in like a, a winning culture's workout and in their gym. And you could feel it in everything we did. You know, even when we're just doing ball handling drills or stretching, like it's always loud. People are screaming. People are always cheering you on. Like to be able to feel that and be be in that, it means a lot, and it's it's, it's special. And I'm glad that Boston was the place that chose me. And what was that draft night like for you? Were you kind of expecting Boston to have interest in you? And you know, I saw you with family and friends and such. What was what was that night like for you? Um, it was amazing. It was a dream come true. Obviously, to hear your name called, um, it mean, it means the world to a, to a guy like me who's who's been dreaming of that. Um, I'm glad. I'm super happy that it was Boston. Uh, I'm glad that they entrusted me with their pick. And I'm just happy that I'm here. Jordan, how much pride do you take in your defense? Oh, tremendous pride, because that, that's what's going to get me on the floor now, and that's what that's what you know my game is. That's the foundation of, of of my game, and that's what you know everything else stems out of. So to be able to to harp on that, that's not something like scoring the ball. To be able to harp on defense, which is just energy and effort, like I feel like that's that's really important. Can you can you just imagine? What it's going to be like to check into your first NBA game? I imagine it's going to be some some crazy because I heard you know in college Arkansas fans are crazy, but I heard Celtics fans are crazier. So, <laughs> so I'm excited for it for sure. Yeah, family was certainly loud when you guys drafted. Yeah, how excited are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, they were just as excited, if not more, than I was. 
Um, I mean, you heard the video. The dude was screaming in the background. <laughs> like, he, he was super excited. Um, I'm even more excited, but they, they've definitely been along the journey for me. So for them, it's a dream come true as well. Who's that over there waving? Well, that's my mom right here. Um, whenever you see me dunk a ball in a game, she'll be dunking with me. So just, that's her if you ever see her face. Jordan, Brad said that he got the vibe that you wanted to come back for a second workout here. Why was that the case if he's right on that read? Um, because I, I know what type of organization Boston is. I know that, you know, being able to be with guys like Tatum and Brown, who, who can give me wisdom and, in a win, and are in a winning environment, who have been to the playoffs so many times, um, an organization that has so many championships, like to be in that environment, to grow in a place like that as your first place, so they set the foundation for your career, I feel like that's the most important part is that, is that foundation, and Boston has a great foundation for that.